Well, this just in, we're getting our first look at the votes and the efforts to recall Seattle City Councilwoman Shama Sawant. And right now, the King County Elections Office just dropped their initial numbers. These are the ballots that have been counted so far. 53% of the votes counted, calling for the recall of Shama Sawant. Just about 47% saying keep her in office. Now, there will be more votes counted tomorrow, but right now the recall is passing at this point. But historically, we know that progressives vote later. Shama Sawant's voters have voted later in the past. So this number will likely change tomorrow when we get more votes. But at this time, right now, the voters are saying Shama Sawant should be recalled. But again, we'll have more updates in the days to come. Now, this is the first time a group has ever tried to oust a Seattle City Council member. Fox 13's Hannah Kim has the details on the turnout today and what's at stake. In Capitol Hill today, signs supporting Shama Sawant and street corners. I'm hoping that most people are coming out to vote. For more than a year and a half, the people behind the recall effort went to court, gathered signatures, raised money to get to this point, a rare recall election. This is a pretty... Um, contentious issue in D District 3. As of 9 a.m. Tuesday, more than 38 percent of ballots were returned by Seattle's District 3 voters. Considering November's election saw 30 percent return around the same time for District 3, it's clear people are passionate one way or another. In the November election, we had several key races, including the mayor's race. All of those together were less galvanizing than Sawant alone. That, that's really striking in terms of like just getting people motivated to vote and to vote early. UW political scientist Professor Mark Allen Smith says historically recalls are not just hard to get on a ballot, but usually harder to win. If she prevails, it, it, it almost empowers her because she, she has very clear convictions about what's right and wrong to, to do in politics and she's willing to approach some lines, arguably go over some lines. The people behind the recall are basing the move on three charges against Sawant. They say Sawant led a protest to Mayor Durkin's home, an address that was supposed to be protected. There is also the time she unlocked City Hall to hundreds of protesters in 2020, violating COVID restrictions. Lastly, Sawant paid fines for misusing city funds for her tax Amazon initiative. But the question tonight, are those charges enough to recall an elected official? I don't think it's like warranted to do a recall. I'm glad people are coming out to like, you know, say vote no, hopefully. Others did not want to reveal how they voted because of how polarizing the battle has been so far. My next door blog is full of vitriol and I don't want to have anything to do with either, either side with that. It's just a lose-lose situation. It's going to be a close race, we know, um, and, and we're excited to see what the votes are. Hannah Kim, Fox 13 News.